Hey, it's Norm from Tested.com. I'm once again joined by Frank Ippolito, effects artist extraordinaire, creator of the Zoidberg Project. But we're here to talk about a different project you've been working on, uh, something a bigger scale. Yeah, a little bit bigger. Uh, it's pretty much one of the bigger things I've ever built. Yeah. Um, you were approached by Capcom yeah. to recreate something for, or something that doesn't exist, for E3, coming up this June. Yeah, they have a game called Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, and there's a creature in there called the Gore Magala, and they asked me to build a sort of full-size version of it. You're not building just the, uh, the the wings or like the big, the whole body of the creature, you're building just the front of the creature, because it's gonna be part of their display at the booth. Yeah, they're gonna have a big 20-foot tall backdrop, and it's almost like the creature's coming out of the backdrop. Okay. And so this is, to scale, this would be this is 20 inches, so it would be 20 feet tall. All right. And then this is where the part of the creature is missing. So based on all of that artwork, we sculpted a little maquette. Ah, okay. So just like in the Zoidberg project, you know, you, you use a maquette to kind of figure out your scale and your shape, and this this was to get approval for the position and the pose and any little nuances that we needed to get for for the, the, the Gore Magala. So talk about the sculpting of this maquette. Uh, perspective was very important. We talk about forms and how people are gonna take photos of this because uh, people are gonna stand in front of this yeah. and then make it look like the entire creature is behind them. Yeah, the, the goal was to be about five foot and about 10 feet away from the creature. And that was kind of the, the area of perspective that we wanted it to, mm. to work from. Um, so a friend of mine, Alfred Perez, he worked on this maquette for me. And this is less for the minor details because that's you worry about that later. Yeah. And it's more for the structure. Yeah. So what we did is we took this maquette and then we put it on a little turntable and took photos of it as it's moving around. And then we uploaded it to... Autodesk 123D Catch. Yes. Come on, photogrammetry. Yes. You're taking photos of, uh, of a, a real object, in this case the maquette, yes. and through photos, not 3D, it's a 3D scanning method. <laughs> uh, the computer processes the photos, figures out all the different angles, and you get a 3D model. Yeah, so we had a rough 3D model, which we imported into SketchUp, and that helped us build uh, the framework and figure out how the arms are gonna come off, because this thing's huge. You know, for scale, this is kind of a six foot tall person. It's kind of big, and for transportation, it needs to come apart and to get it into E3 and everywhere else it, it may go. So that's so we, we had to design a whole steel framework inside that comes apart so the arms come off of it too. Well to call it big is a little bit of an understatement because we have it actually right here and it is big. So let's take a look at this Gore Magala. Sure. Wow, Frank, this is your life-size Gore Magala. Yep. So uh, tell me about what's inside this. What material is this? Because it can't be, it's not like Zoidberg where it's cast resin. Yeah, well, we wanted to keep it light. So we wanted the structure to be out of a urethane foam. It's, a, it's like a sculpting urethane foam. But because it needs to be transported and everything else, you put a steel frame inside of it so that it's got a little bit of structure to it. But that urethane foam is a little bit delicate, so we wanted to put a skin on it. So what we did is we called our buddies over at Smooth On and they have a new material called uh, freeform habitat, which is an epoxy clay. So it's just like sculpting on Zoidberg, mm -hmm. but you mix this epoxy up and you could put it all over the whole thing and now it's super hard. And so I have a hard candy coating on this foam shell with a steel structure inside. So you gotta think of it like a real creature, you know, like, like you have a skeleton, yeah. so you have there are steel frames or skeleton, and then the muscles or the foam, which is what you carve the form out of, mm -hmm. and then on the outside, your hard candy shell for the dragon skin. Yes. Is, is, that, is that new material from Smooth On. Um, and then the detail work is in that new material, right? Yeah, we, we were able to sculpt it and we could sand it and grind it and change things. And right here, this is just, I just primered this part this morning. So this is primered, but before the primer, it's, you could see all the, the details of where we were sculpting and moving stuff around. So. so I'm really curious about that sculpting process and working with those materials. Can you give us a demonstration sure. of that stuff? Yeah, sure, over here. All right, Frank, so this is the foam that's inside the Score Magala. Yeah, we bought this in big giant sheets. It was probably about this, hall, this tall of stack of foam sheets that were four by eight. And um, we could just carve it down so you could take a knife or whatever you want and just that's a you can very cut it. pleasurable sound. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> super, it's super easy to kind of get these big rough forms and then when you want to reform it more or refine it more, it's just like with Zoidberg, we use a rake tool with you know the little teeth on it. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can take that and you could make curves. Yeah, sculpt the shapes, sculpt, you know, you can carve in, you know, wrinkles or scales or whatever you want. And so we were able to make 
the whole, all the shapes and all the forms out of this stuff. Does the foam have to be here together in some way? Yeah, you could take, uh, there's this canned foam that you could just squirt and it just glues it together. You mm -hmm. could take two-part foams like from Smooth On. We use that in a bunch of places just to fill voids. Um, you just mix it together and it, and it expands a little bit and then glue the pieces together. When you're working with clay and you're sculpting with clay, you can always add material back. Mm -hmm. Here, can you do that? What's, what's different in that You process? can, like there was a couple of times where, you know, we wanted the head to turn a little bit more. So we would, you know, carve a section off and then glue a new piece of foam on there and then carve mm -hmm. it differently. But this is, this is in general, a different kind of sculpting called subtractive sculpting. It's kind of like if you were gonna make a marble statue or something like that, you can really only take away, if you take away too much, then you have to kind of start over in a right, sense. Right. So we'd have to cut that section off and put a new piece of foam on there. And the foam only is so, so thick because you're talking about sheets of foam and so you're creating layers. You're, are you combining the layers at once to create a block and then sculpting out of that? Well, what we did is we would glue different thicknesses of foam under the steel structure. Some were only like four inches thick, some were 10 inches thick. You can get them in all kinds of different thicknesses, but just for easily managing them, we got them in different thicknesses between four and 10 inches. All right, so once you have that form done, you don't need all that tiny scale work. No. That's done with the, the top layer. Yeah, we, we, we laid it out a bit just for kind of a roadmap, but then mm -hmm. all the details came in with the epoxy. All right, Frank, show me how to make some dragons Skin. <laughs> All right, so first we get this stuff, which is freeform habitat. Um, and it was actually, as far as I'm aware, it was developed for uh, people that build big aquariums. Huh. And so if they're building like a habitat for fish and stuff like that, oh. um, this Water is what they would make the coral and everything for. Okay, um, so, so it's two part epoxy. It's two part epoxy, so you take a scoop of the A, now, when you were mixing epoxy or first before, you wanted mm -hmm. equivalent mixtures. Yeah. How, how do you measure that out? Well, you could weigh this, which on the Dragon, we weighed every single batch just so that everything was perfect. Okay. But it's it's eyeballable for 50-50 mixtures. And the B. A little bit of black, a little bit of white. Yeah. Um, and these things are super, super sticky. So what they have is this stuff called folding powder, which is kind of like if you were making pizza dough. Mm -hmm. So you just kind of powder it, and then you can fold it. Ah, so and mix it so that way it's not stuck all over my hands and all gooey. Right. And the more of this folding powder that you put inside of it, um, this, you can control the viscosity of it. So if you want it to sculpt like finer details, you can make it a little bit stiffer. And if I want to you know, cover a big giant area like one of those scales, I can make it a little bit gooier so it spreads easy. Once that's all mixed up, how malleable is it and what is your working time? Um, it's about an hour work time. And after that, it starts getting hard. Yep, it, it starts getting hard, and then, and then by the next morning, it's a 16-hour full cure. So it's a lot of this dust, this powder, and a mm -hmm. lot of this material yeah. to cover all of that. How much material did you use? We used four five-gallon kits of A and B, so that'd be 20 gallons in total material. And that's for dragon skin. <laughs> yeah. So when you're covering it on top of this foam, did you have to put another layer of adhesive, or does epoxy just stick? No, it, it actually sticks really good to, to things. So if I just take and I wet down the surface, you can just put this stuff right on it. And because my hands are powdered, mm -hmm. it kind of helps press it into place. And this, this folding powder is like water soluble, so as soon as you get it wet, it becomes sticky again. So I can shoot this with water, and then I can sculpt little details into it. You know, so if I was doing, you know, like wrinkles and stuff like that, you could just carve those right into there. Take a brush with some water, kind of soften some of the details. And we took a, a terry cloth towel and actually just pressed that into there just for some skin texture. Ah, okay. So that the scales all have a little bit of a texture to it. Mm -hmm. So then this, this is kind of how we did the whole dragon. We covered the whole thing with this epoxy and sculpted all the details, gave it all the texture. How many people did you work with? Uh, I had about, what, about seven or eight people wow. just going every, six days a week. And this is like a fairly rushed job in terms of getting it ready for E3. Yeah, we had about four or five weeks total to do the whole thing. So this is my last week right now. It's just painting and then we stick it in a crate and take it to E3. So this thing fits in one crate or splits apart? It splits apart. We designed it so that the arms come off so that way it fits in the three different crates. And then the painting process. Yeah, so this was one of the early tests I did with the material where I just made one of the claws and then I airbrushed some of this metallic kind of pearlescent colors and then airbrushed in some blacks and I tried a, a matte finish and a glossy finish. And I think we're gonna go with the matte because it'll most match what the backdrop's gonna be. All right, Frank, we can't wait to see this when it's finally painted and done. How about let's go to E3 and take some photos in front of this. Let's get over to E3. All right, see you there. It's so 
here we are, E3 2014, at the Capcom booth. This dragon is done. Frank, how'd it turn out? I think this thing came out great. I've had such a great crew on the whole job. Everybody's helped out so much. So when we last saw you, you were getting the dragon primed and ready for painting. Yep. We talked about some of the techniques you might be using. How did that all roll out? Well, first thing I did was primer the whole thing. I used my big Iwata W101, primed the whole thing, and then I used FW inks to paint all these little details. And it's just these pearlescent whites and blues and purples all over here. Yeah, it looks like you're iridescent, so you just, when the light bounces off it at different angles, it's a different shade of purple. Yeah, I wanted to make it look like it's got some depth and stuff to it, even though it's not like a translucent thing, it's just solid black. Nice. So, Where did you put most of that paint detail? Is it mostly in the face? You know, yeah, mostly on the face. There's stuff on the whole thing, though. Um, I surprisingly only used like a small amount of paint oh. to do all this little detail. I thought it was wow. going to be gallons. It was just a tiny little bit. And then what was the process like transporting this down all the way to LA? I guess you're in LA, but from yeah. your shop to here. Well, it comes apart, the legs come off, and the body is separate. And so they got crated up and then shipped over here, and then we put it together here. Awesome. People are waiting, up in, waiting in line to get photos taken with the Gormagala. And they're standing, there's a, a staircase in the back. Yep. They have props. And, and then it, with this backdrop, it makes it look like you're standing in front of this 20 foot giant dragon. Yeah, and then at, kind of at the last minute, they also asked me to build an archway for it. So as soon as this went out my door, I started on the archway that's over here. Never crank that out real quick. Stop working. So some people obviously, uh, if they're not at E3 now, uh, they want to find out if they can see this. Where can they see this? Before? This will be at San Diego Comic Con this year. Oh, it's going to be Comic Con. Yes, it will be, be at the Comic-Con. Capcom booth at San Diego Comic Con. Well, if you're not at E3, then try to make your way down to San Diego. Once again, Frank, thank you so much for showing us how you built a giant dragon from Monster Hunter 4. This will be out next year. Yeah, early 2015. Awesome. Thanks again. We'll thank see you. you guys on Tested. Subscribe to our YouTube channel up north. Bye.